this computer. There we go, recording is started. And uh, let's see, where are we now? We're at, uh, oops, I'm not sharing the screen. Okay, so uh, hello everybody. This is uh, Matt Stevens, I'm in Penang, Malaysia. Oh, but I should probably put it, well, it doesn't matter, this is a recording for, for uh, Learning Together. This is Learning Together, episode 473, the 18th of June, 2020. And it's Talon, Teaching and Learning on, in Isolation, uh, webinar number 27. That's quite a lot we got here. Uh, Lane was one of the first who did a presentation for us. So um, having said that, I'm going to get the, uh, the, the um, Facebook stream started. So let me just pop, get that on, live on YouTube, live on, oh, live on YouTube, I've already got a queue, let me just go ahead and go live, oh, oh, it does this, sometimes it, uh, ah, it stops, so give me a minute here, I don't know, Heike, why don't you kick it off beyond that, and, um, if, if I may just start with just one kind um, sort of request of yours, uh -huh. um, because we would like to listen to Vance presenting, and whilst he's presenting, we'd like to everyone to mute. And um, if you mute yourself now, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, because it's about Zoom bombing, obviously. And if we did have a Zoom bomber in here now, the one thing he would use is he would, he or she would unmute themselves and start speaking rubbish, yeah, just destructing or just, you know, disturbing. It's a possibility. And so what I, what I do now in the settings is I uncheck the allow participants to unmute themselves functionality, which is a little bit hidden in the options possibility. So mute all, which I could do now with you all, so I mute all, um, doesn't do the trick. I ha really have to disable the unmuting possibility for you. So allow participants to unmute themselves. I am disabling this now. So you won't be able to unmute yourself. But what you could do is you could raise a hand or type in the text that you would like to comment on things in voice. And then obviously we'll give you speaking rights. If that's okay with you for now, then over to you, Vance. Okay. Well, what I had done is I had set up the stream, but, uh, I've seen this before with uh, Facebook. When you set up the stream, it doesn't, uh, it, if you leave it sitting there, it doesn't actually uh, go live. So what I'm going to do now, mm -hmm. I'm almost there to where I'm going to, I'm setting up the, uh, the description and the title. I'm doing that right now. Again, I should say, and I'm hitting go live right now and it's really dark blue and now it's going live. So and would you like me to repeat this just now <laughs> for the live stream? <laughs> no, it's okay because okay. I, oh, oh well, you, you could you can tell us what you've done if you want. We've or got you a, can repeat it if you want to. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see where we are here. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, uh, doing a lot of different things as you can imagine. Uh, Simone has just joined us. Welcome, Simone. And what, what's happened here is what we're, we're modeling kind of how you could run a, a, uh, a Zoom session without, well, and setting up your de defenses against Zoom bombers. And uh, Heike has just done something that I never do. Uh, I start, I set in my settings that we start the, uh, we, we force everybody to go through a waiting room. Heike has released that, and she's going to explain why she did that. But uh, that's one of the defenses, is you can set up a waiting room. There are other defenses that we've also set up. In fact, it would be really nice if we had any Zoom bombers who wanted to join us now and test our defenses. <clears throat> that would be just remarkable. Um, in any event, we, what we've done is we've started the recording uh, in both places. We were broadcasting to Facebook Live, I believe. Just double check that. Um, yes, I believe we are, and um, and we're also recording this in the Zoom uh, recording options. So uh, Heike has just asked me to start presenting, but I thought Heike was going to start presenting. Uh, that, not that it matters, we're very relaxed here, uh, but uh, 
I could do it if you like. I can present. I'm, I've got about a 20, 25 minute showing what we do, or what I do anyway, to set my settings. So hi, Marianne, how are you? And uh, your, your, uh, Heike has just uh, muted you. She's, she's set everybody to mute. Is that correct, Heike? You've muted everybody. Well, it's actually um, the mute all was already clicked. It must mm -hmm. have been clicked by you, Vance, did you? I didn't click it, but I set to mute everybody on entry. Ah, can, can so they... the mute all, for mm -hmm. me, it, it is blue. So the mute all is checked. And what I did was I went into the little three dots on the right hand side of these invite, uh -huh. mute all, unmute all, and then under these three little dots is the option allow participants to unmute themselves. Uh huh. Okay. Because I don't, I don't well, we can try mind. this out now if you like. So I'll I'll enable that again. So mm -hmm. even if you said mute all, mm -hmm. this would not stop people to now be able to unmute themselves. Yes. Yeah, that's the way I like to run my webinars. I like for people to be able to unmute themselves. But then if I... Yeah, me too. Me too. I, Don't yeah. mind you. But, but, but during a presentation, this is the option what Zoom Bomber is yes. using. Yes, I have set in the, the settings I'm going to show people eventually uh, where you mute everybody on entry. And you also set where once you've unmuted them, you cannot let... They cannot then... Sorry, once you've muted them, they can't unmute themselves. So I did set that. I don't. Would, would anybody like to try their unmute and see what what you can do? But it wasn't. It wasn't said just now. Oh. I did it manually. Yeah, I'm afraid. Well, but the question is, can they unmute themselves? Can Chris has unmuted himself? I well, unmute. just now I just now I enabled that functionality again. Ah, okay. Okay. Manually myself. Okay. okay, and Marianne has unmuted herself. That's good. Okay, so, well, I guess what we're dem demonstrating, we got a co-host here. So co-hosting, we got people doing, all, that's one hand here and doesn't know what that hand is doing and there's another hand. Okay, so, uh, but it's okay. The, the idea is that you have the ability to mute everybody on entry. You have the ability to uh, set uh, it so that, they, that participants cannot unmute themselves. And then you set the unmute all. Did you, is that what you did, Heike, or did you mute everybody? No, I simply unchecked the allow participants to unmute themselves option. I checked and, it again. And you have... So I allowed, I allowed them. Okay, yeah? and you, you had this in, in the more part, which is... Let's see, exactly. I've just, I've just expanded my screen. My stream. Uh, I don't have anything under more. Let's see, under participants? It's under participants, or where is it? No, it's, um, do you know, do you see underneath the participant grid? It says yes, oh, the, the ellipse is there. Invite. Ah, okay. So, uh, yes, mute participants on entry, allow participants to unmute themselves. Ah, okay. That's yep. the one. That's the one I unchecked earlier. Okay, I didn't, uh, I didn't actually cover that in my, uh, so, uh, yeah, that's really nice. Let me just make a screenshot here. Uh, I'm going to make a screenshot. Okay, so I'm going to use this. Uh, all right. And I'll this use. is the one when, mm -hmm. when I discovered that functionality, which I wasn't aware of, mm -hmm. and I, I did mute all, you know, of course mm -hmm. you do it during, during presentation as a mm -hmm. host, you just click on mute all. And I was forever surprised that people were still be able to open their mics. Uh -huh. It didn't do the trick. Those who came late, their mics were open. And I'm thinking, uh -huh. how, why okay. on earth, how come oh, that's cool. the mics... See, and that's when, when I eventually discovered that under the little three dots in the settings uh -huh. and unchecked it. Okay. And that is when I was able to undo the waiting room. Mm. I was able to undo any disturbance during the presentations. I was then able to, at the end of a presentation, to say, okay, now everybody, would you like to join in a discussion? And I checked this again, and then everybody was able to unmute themselves. Uh -huh. That was, for me, the big revelation in Zoom, to be able okay. to be free. <laughs> yes, that's really great. That's really great. Well, we call, these, this, we call this learning together, because that's what we do. We learn together. So uh, Heike and I have been learning together for a long time. And uh, I, I love learning 
from Heike. She's so knowledgeable. And of course, I'm sort of knowledgeable. So she learns a little bit from me. But what, what the way we set this up is Heike started out, I think, by preparing a document, which is, uh, it's in the, the, uh, the show notes, which you've probably got on learningtogether.pbworks.com. So uh, in those show notes, or, or on Talon, uh, there's a link to that, Talon, uh, uh, tinyurl.com slash Talon2020. That will take you to um, also a link that takes you to our show notes. So Heike started out by making a document, which I don't know if you want to start talking about that, Heike, or if you want me to show mine, because what I did, I couldn't really understand Heike's document that well until I'm very meticulous. So I've got to do things step by step. So I just went into my uh, Zoom screenshots and I made screenshots of everything I could see there and I set it up the way I thought it should be. And that's what I'm planning to show you. That's my presentation. If you want, I can get started on that. Do you want me to get started on that? And please, do it? please go ahead. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Well, let me show you that. Does anybody have any questions? So as long as you've got the ability to use the mic. Uh, hi, Nancy. Uh, hi, Lucy. Lucy is here. Okay. And uh, we're, we're very informal here. So we, we like for people to talk to us if you want to. Don't mind if you ask questions. And uh, so just feel free to unmute a mic if you have that ability and just talk to us. But what I'm going to show you then is um, how, and, and also I, I should say before we start that I came on this because in the TESOL, in my TESOL lounge, uh, there was a, a webinar that experienced the Boom Bomber. Now I myself, when speaking with Nick Peachy recently, uh, experienced a Zoom bomber, and I didn't know all I know now about Zoom bombing, but a hiker was there, which was very helpful. And um, like, for example, I hadn't set a co-host. I didn't know about that when I was doing Nick. So, uh, but I, ha I did know about the waiting room. And uh, so uh, after that happened, uh, we were able to manage it, I should say. We got rid of the Zoom bombers, but, and, and Nick did a normal presentation. But um, it, I looked into it very seriously. And by that, I mean, I took the screenshots of all my um, uh, Zoom settings and I just went through them bit by bit. Now, I produced a document. Let me just go ahead and share my screen here. So uh, let's see which screen do I want to share. I guess this one. Okay, so I'm sharing the screen, which is uh, this one. This is my slideshow. Let me go up to this. This is, uh, I'm going to click on this link right here. Yes, there you go. This is the, the document. You just feed back to me if you can see this okay. Um, uh, we can see this fine. Lovely. Yeah, this is the document I produced. And this document is where I took screenshots. It, it's got a little bit there I've added about the presentation today. I've got a, a uh, table of contents. So you can search here and you can find uh, all this uh, links to all the settings here, but basically, uh, I'm going to show you this in a PowerPoint because it's much better organized. But uh, I've taken it from the settings page by page, and when you start opening your settings, this is what you see first. And so this document shows you page by page what to set. So the doc in the document, it's all there. So um, what I've done though is I have taken I've I've done this presentation. This presentation, let me just present the presentation, if I can find the present button here. The uh, chat was over it. Okay, so there we go. So there's my, there's uh, what we're talking about tonight. Heike and I are talking about how to effectively diffuse Zoom bombers. And uh, I do this as part of Learning Together, which is my own little personal thing I've been doing for 10 years now. And also something I started recently, Talon, Teaching and Learning in Isolation. And that's just in response to what's been going on in the world and the pandemic, teachers having to teach like this. So the document I just, oh, well, okay, I'm gonna show you in a minute how you can get these slides. This is how you can get these slides. I set up, you, you can do this now if you want. You can go to tinyurl.com uh, for the slides, it's slash zoom 2020 Vance. And for the document that you saw, it's slash Vance 2020 Zoom. This is tinyurl.com. So if you uh, go to either of those places, you'll get the, the documents linked to one another. 
if you want to see the slides, I think the slides are more logical because they're presented in a logical order. So we're gonna talk first about uh, general settings that are best practice for all of your meetings. That's a, the parts of the slides that are like that. And security settings that you have to set before you launch your meeting. So those are the things that when people are Zoom bombed, they often don't know about those settings that you have to set in advance. And the security settings that you can then adjust during your meeting. So the ones that Heike just showed us, for example. And then I just mentioned a couple of other settings that people don't really know about, like setting up a, a um, the background, the, the funny background. Uh, that one has to be set in advance. Or if you want to do breakout rooms, you have to set breakout rooms in advance. So basically on this one, the text and the slide documents lead to one another. So if you want, and if you want to ask me uh, if I'm talking, if I go on from the slide, you want to ask me what, what was that URL again, you can see that. And also I should point out that at the bottom of each URL, uh, I went ahead of the slide, I didn't mean to do that, but at the bottom of each URL, the, there's a link which takes you back to the text document for more information. So just to start out, uh, let me see if I can change my view here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I've got a good view now. Okay, so the settings I'm talking about are if you uh, go to Zoom URS, as you can see there, and you click on, and you log in. If you log in, then you can see my account. If you click on my account, it takes you to another window. So if you follow this uh, over to the left here, if when you click on my account, you see your profile page, and at the bottom of that, there's settings. If you click on settings, it opens up a new window, which is the one you see in the bottom right of the screen. And that's uh, where you have meetings, recordings, or telephone. You can see those settings. And we're talking here about the meeting settings. So if you're not following that, it's okay. You can find the slides later and you can see exactly where we are. Or do we have any questions before I go on? Do you know where we are? Or do you need to know anything further? Actually, I'm, I'm just, um, I'm also texting. And I'm asked, uh, for one thing, I've pasted the tiny URLs in the text chat. Um, we've also, I've also asked people whether they have experienced Zoom bombing and whether, and one said, no, she ha they both didn't have, but one of them has heard much about it. So I said, mm -hmm. what have you heard? And then there was uh, um, whether everyone has a Zoom account, because mm -hmm. whatever you're showing only makes sense for those who do have their mm -hmm. own Zoom accounts. And, and Lane has just asked a question which we're going to come on to in a moment. So Lane, when we get to that point about the video, I really don't, I don't know if I can answer this question right away, but let's, let's go on in my presentation and we'll talk about it when we reach, get there. So uh, these are back, basically the general settings that I set up for all my meetings, uh, no matter how important they are. The first thing you should know is you should not use your personal meeting ID for, a setting, for meetings such as this one that we have right now. So you use your personal ID when you schedule what's called an instant meeting or something you just, that's, that's kind of like your phone number. It's like if you, you, know, you want to make a phone call to people, you give them your phone number, but not just anybody in general. So your personal ID really means to be, needs to be, uh, when you're scheduling a meeting, uh, is you, I, I set the use personal ID when scheduling a meeting off because I don't really want to do that. Only when I'm starting an instant meeting. And I always require passwords. So here again at the bottom of the slide, if you, if you get the slides and you click on that link, then you can see exactly, you can see more information about that. But that's where it is. I'm gonna go through the slides because unless you have questions, you're welcome to ask at any time. But uh, I just wanna run through the slides so that uh, you'll have it all there, or you can see it in the slideshow, you have it all in any event. An instant meeting, Marianne asked, an instant meeting is um, basically, if you just wanna meet people, uh, you realize that you need to have a meeting, so you give them your, you can start a meeting in your personal ID. Or you can also schedule a meeting. You don't have to use your personal ID. But the thing is, your personal ID is not something you put out on social media. So your person, you, you can, now I have a pro account that might be, I might have uh, different uh, settings for people. Uh, you know, a pro account might be different. And Heike has one as well. So free accounts, I realize don't actually have all these settings, but uh, 
in any event. And then you might consider going pro if you really got high stakes. Um, it, it costs $200 a year, I think. So uh, in any event, um, you get a personal ID when you sign up for a Zoom account. You shouldn't really give it out to just anybody. It, treat it as your personal phone number. It's, if you want to create a meeting, you best if you create a meeting fresh. Okay. And when you set up a meeting, always set a password for it. Okay, so uh, when you schedule a meeting, this is uh, the standard, just standard procedure. You should, uh, sorry, I'm having a little trouble here. There we go, okay. Uh, you know how, Zoom, how Windows does when you move Windows off so you can see what you're doing, and then they, it expands the Windows. That's what I'm having trouble with right now. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, I always set, oh, sorry about that. I'm using my mouse for things, okay. So anyway, uh, partic participant videos are always set to off, and host videos are always set to off. Mics are always set off. I set them all off in my basic settings because you don't want people to come into a meeting and their video is on, uh, and you don't want them to come into a meeting with background noise. So I always set these things to off. Okay, so I'm not really sure. Um, videos I'm not clear on. I think participants can turn them back on again and off again as they like. I don't know how you how you prevent that. Is that is there any way to do that? Um, yeah, um, Lane asked that question. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I said, um, you have a control of the audio in Zoom, but you do not have control of the video in mm -hmm. Zoom. Mm -hmm. So when participants want to switch on their video, they can anytime. Yes. But yes. when they switch it on once, you as a host can go into the video of that person under the three dots itself. Yes. Like oh, click uh -huh. on their webcam, uh -huh. go to the uh -huh. three dots, then say stop video, and then the person cannot switch the video on anymore. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to my Zoom settings and see what she's telling us here. I have to stop my share to see this. Okay, so stop my share, hitting the three dots. Oh, sorry, three dots under the, this is under the text, under the participants control no it's it's in yes. their in their webcam images their live images there is the uh -huh. three dots Under and live, there it says stop video uh live images three dots under live images i don't if really... you hover your mouse over the people's faces uh over the people's faces ah the three dots there Ooh, wow i had never seen this before or i had never noticed it before but so you, and you hover your when you when uh -huh. you select stop video there, they cannot uncheck it by themselves ah, anymore. That's yeah. really good. Okay. So yes, as a host, you have the ability to, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can grab a screen here. <clears throat> I'm just going to do a print screen so I can have. And, and sometimes it's said that, you know, people enter the room and they accidentally switch on their webcams or they switch <laughs> on the webcams or, um, if you at the outset start Zoom with the option without webcam, then it discourages people to switch on the webcams. If you start Zoom at the outset using the webcam or the video, then people will get a little preview. It's like, um, you know, you can set your hair preview. Mm -hmm as they join. And so when they've already seen themselves on the webcam and set their hair, they're more likely inclined to switch on the webcam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I tend to start Zoom always without video uh -huh. because people can switch on the videos anytime in Zoom. It's just, it discourages them at the outset or it encourages them at the outset. And then, um, when I start a meeting like that, people still come in with their video switched on, usually the mobile phone users. And I keep, because of the mute button, I keep saying, don't worry, presenter. Um, this person, even if they have their webcams on, it will not be on the recording because Zoom only takes the recordings when sound is attached to the video. You see, mm -hmm. the speaker view recording only picks up when the picks up the webcam when that person is speaking. 
So if there's a live presentation with somebody being in the middle of the presentation and people come in and they switch on their mobile phone uh, wobbly kind of webcams, um, I quickly go there, stop the video and they cannot switch it on again. And this, this disturbance will not be on the recording. Mm, okay. See, because they're, they're muted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And I've got the ability, I think it's in the recording, to set a gallery view or a webcam view. So you, uh, anyway. If you, okay. do, if you do gallery view, then obviously then the gallery view will be there, even though there's uh, people are muted. But yes. um, I always set it to speaker view for mm -hmm. presentation recordings. Um, and then this is okay. Yeah. I, I like to jump back and forth. I like to go, you know, show a gallery and then go to speaker. So that's my my preference, but okay. Anyway, so let me let me resume the screen share, and thank you very much for your comments. So if I go back to where I was, where was I? Here I'm over here. Okay. So um, sure. And yes. Len Len's question is, um, she asked, is there a way to have a pre message they see in the waiting room telling them to come in without video? I know you can message the waiting room only okay. after the first person is waiting. Mm -hmm. Do those messages stay there for subsequent arrivals? If so, many questions. Very good questions. Thanks. Probably Mike. not. I would guess not. Yeah. Well, my experience is that the messages stay. I've mm -hmm. seen several messages of mine on. I've been looking at it on the iPad. How mm -hmm. how in the waiting room the the messages come in, and yes, uh, the first person has to be there for the first message to be able to be sent. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. But afterwards, and I use this often to a tell the people, a uh, please when you're in the waiting room, there's um, there's a presentation live, like Vance is presenting live. Mm -hmm. Please, when you come in from the waiting room, do not switch on your webcam, mute yourself, and do not disturb. There's a live presentation going on, and I keep writing these messages into the waiting room, and let them read this and let them wait a little <laughs> to read it <laughs> because mm -hmm. to prepare them. Yes. Uh, very good point, Len. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, Vance. Yeah. No problem. Continue. I just switched. <laughs> I just stopped the share and switched back over to speaker view. I'm not, I don't have really, oh, I don't have okay. control over that at the moment. Well, if I'm sharing, I, I'm not able to do that. Okay. So please uh, continue. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So anyway, basically we're still on passwords and uh, uh, you want to be very careful with passwords. Uh, I require a password for all meetings, I require a password when scheduling meetings, I do that. Uh, that's very important, I think. I don't know, you, you guys seem to have easily found the password. I was careful about where I publish a password. I don't put this on Facebook, or, uh, but only in, in uh, uh, the webheads and action group that I, it's a, a groups IO, I put it there. I put it in on my websites, the two websites. So apparently you found it. I don't know if there are other people there who are not able to see. I don't know if somebody wants to check the Facebook page and see if there's any chat going on there. I'm not able to see that while I'm uh, sharing my screen. But anyway, there. Uh, that's one thing that people can do if you set a Facebook meeting up or a YouTube stream up. Facebook is very is the easiest, I think. And um, also, if I record it, then I make a recording and I put it in YouTube, and so then I share it to YouTube. So there doesn't really seem much point streaming it to YouTube. Well, then I'll have two recordings in YouTube. This way, I have one in Facebook, one in YouTube, and I can embed the one in Facebook in my blog post. Here. So, in any event, back to passwords. Uh, require a password when scheduling new meetings. I do that, and then also I want to be sure that you may not know about this. I, I want to be sure that. I don't send out the long link, but I call it a long link, which has the password, the encrypted password embedded in it. So I switch that off. So uh, where it says embed password and invite link for one click join, uh, I switch that off. I'm not really familiar with requiring passwords for participants, participants who are joined by phone. I don't know, I could know any about, anything about that. The thing is that you can find out the password, even if you have that long encrypted link, you can find out the password in a meeting by clicking on, that is uh, in the microphone, at the left-hand side in Zoom, 
you click on audio settings. Uh huh. No, sorry, you click on. Sorry, so, 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 uh. Okay, I'm going to check this out myself. No, 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 hang on. It's the, um, the phone. Switch to phone audio. Okay, switch to phone audio it is, sorry. In the, under, under the arrow next to the microphone icon, there's this switch to phone audio. Mm -hmm. And this is where you find the password of the meeting. Do you, uh, okay, and where is that? Uh, do you have your webcam on, Heike? I, I see a blank I, I cannot, unfortunately, I cannot. <laughs> no, no, I cannot demonstrate it in Zoom because when uh -huh. I screen share Zoom, uh -huh. Zoom closes, so I can't. Okay. So, but okay. what you do is you click on the arrow next to the microphone icon. Uh huh. Okay. Yes, I'm clicking and there. And then it's the Third from the bottom, it says switch to phone audio. Yes, okay. Uh -huh. And there's the meeting password. Ah, okay. Password, password 1510242. Ah, that's, oh, I see. So that's the encrypted password. Uh, well, 410242, okay, for the phone. All right. Okay. Yeah, because those on the phone, they cannot write the, on yes. Zoom. Do you yes. remember? Yeah. Or Zoom bomb is what mm -hmm. you call the password here. So, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. So. Yours just says on your phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's Maybe. interesting. No, that's interesting. No, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to that and, and put some more uh, documentation in my documents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I'll go back to my share. Thank you very much for all that. But if you, as I'm not really familiar with, uh, Using the ah, phone, okay. I usually yeah, try to. Chris, yeah, so Chris this, this also found it. Found another way of getting the password. He uh -huh. says, click on the green shield at the top on the iPad, and you can see the password. This is in the uh -huh. text chat. Did you put that in the text chat? He did put that in the text chat, okay. and the green shield for mm -hmm. me on the Windows machine, when I click on the green shield, mm -hmm. I don't get a password. <laughs> okay, well, we, we have the text chat. Uh, I, I will take the text chat, whatever is in the text chat. If you want to put anything in text chat, it's going to go in the blog. So we'll have a record of everything that goes in the text chat at learningtogether.net. Okay, we'll do it. Okay, so anyway, if you don't suppress the long link, as we were back over here, if you if you don't turn this off, where it says embed password with invite link, then what you get is uh, an invitation which you can copy. And a lot of people just copy these things. They don't suppress the long link. And they, uh, see, it says join Zoom meeting. And this, if you give this invitation out to anybody, then they all have the password. So whoever gets this invitation has the password. They don't have to bother with it, basically. So if you want to uh, be Either you suppress it, and then you get one that only gives you the password up to the uh, the room uh, ID, or you cut it off after the question mark, which is the question mark PWD, which most people can figure out that means password. So uh, anyhow, so you want to be careful with that because you if you send out that link, then everybody can uh, anybody with that link can get into your Zoom session. Okay, so anyway, the, that's the things that I set up for every meeting, uh, any meeting I do. I'm just careful about this. Now, there are a couple of things that you need to know about that you have to uh, set up before you launch your meeting that are actually serious security concerns. That's what I'm going to show you right now. First of all, as Hike and I are doing right now, you have to give, uh, you have to, if you're going to make a co-host, and that's very convenient to do that. Uh, then you need to set that up beforehand in the settings that I showed you at the very outset. So you have to set that up. And having set that up, then if you go to more, I believe, in your settings, then you'll have uh, the ability to set a co-host. Or no, no, is it in the security settings? I can't remember. It's, it's in one of those. But anyway, in, either in the, the shield uh, configure for the room or in the more settings, you can, oh, you can assign a co-host. So, but you need to set that up. Hmm? 
Question? Okay. Not right now, sorry. Okay, so the other thing you need to do, if you want to use a waiting room, you need to set that up beforehand. And that's, there are a couple of options there. The waiting room is where no one gets in the room until you admit them. Now, we only have 10 people in this room right now. But if we had 100 people, you might, I think you might want to use that. And Heike has been careful in the past in her virtual roundtable. At, at some point in there, she said, oh, never mind, I'm going to stop this. And she was quite fine with it. So, and that's what she was, she's turned off the waiting room for this meeting, but there are only 10 people here, so it's quite easy to police. But if you have, um, if you have 100 people in your room and some people start disrupting, then either you need to move them back there or you can kick them out of the meeting. So if the waiting room is, that's how I resolved the Nick Peachy problem. I moved people back into the waiting room, but I hadn't really set that when I kicked them out, they couldn't come back, which is coming up. But if you want to set up a waiting room, you can decide who to put in the waiting room. There's something about if, uh, I, I don't do this, but uh, if you're having a class, if you have a class of people, you might want to allow people in who are in your class, but you could also, if you, people are not in your account, then you can keep them out into the waiting room. Um, if you set up a waiting room, it disables the setting to allow the participants to join before the host. So in other words, nobody can come in anyway. Uh, so there is a join before host that you can click it on or off. If you're gonna click it on, it means, and you don't set up a waiting room, people can be there when you arrive at the meeting. But if you wanna keep people out until you arrive, then either you don't let them join before the host or you set up a waiting room. Uh, okay, so the next thing that people can penetrate your uh, room with is the screen sharing. So you have to be very careful about screen sharing. This is my setting. Uh, under screen sharing, I allow it, but I set it up at the beginning of the meeting so that only a host can share. So I believe that's probably the way it's set up right now. That uh, I believe there is a setting that we'll show you in a moment, which will allow the screen sharing in case you want to turn it on for everybody in the meeting. Another way to turn on screen sharing for just one person is to set that person as co-host. But you can set up a screen share that where only the host can share the screen. That's the safest way to do it. Now, once you set that up, you can say who can start when someone else is sharing. You could allow all participants to do that or host only. You probably want to be careful of that. If you if you allow all participants, that's the next window here, if you let all participants if you give them the ability to share, then you want to be sure that the host only can share while other people are sharing. That way, if a participant grabs the screen share and that's something nasty there, you don't want to see it or inappropriate, I should say, then you want to be sure that you can get it back. So if you set yourself that you can get it back, then you can overcome someone's a Zoom Bomber's screen share. And if you set that, however, to all participants, then you'll have you'll lose control. All participants, if all participants can share, and all participants can share when someone else is sharing, then there is no control. That's really nice if you have a very tight meeting and you know all the people there. Uh, but uh, if you don't know the people there, that's where the Zoom bombers can slip in. So you want to be sure that in my settings, it's always uh, host only can share. And then if I want, if other people want to share, I'll set that up. I'll let them do that in the, in the settings that we can control uh, when uh, anybody, uh, when the meeting is going on. But these things you have to set before you enter the meeting. And can I just say a word to that? Ahead, because it's, yes, please. Mm -hmm. because you've really mentioned a, a big problem there because mm -hmm. really for security settings, you should disallow participants to be able to screen share. Mm -hmm. And of course, you want them to screen share, to be active in a workshop and yes. in, mm -hmm. in a class. Mm -hmm. um, so what the alternative I found during public events is that you um, co-host that person who wants to yes. share the screen. Yeah, that's, that's what I said. as simple as that. Yes. And that's when you um, still disable it for all of the participants. However, yes. there's 
also a way of undoing any of these settings during the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're coming on that. How are you coming? Yes, okay. uh, the security button, the security shield at the, in the taskbar. So these are, we're talking right now. Let me go back to my share screen. Okay, share screen, share that. And okay, there we are. So uh, we were talking about uh, setting up the share. It's Heike is suggesting make it host only, can share the screen, and then allow other people to share. If they don't let all participants share, if you wanted to, you'd have to then make sure. I'm just saying that if you let all participants share, you make sure that the host only can share over other participants. That's very important. So, uh, and we'll show you, but these are things that you have to set before you go into the meeting. So if you get into the meeting and you haven't set these things, you can't go back and reset them. So the other thing that, uh, another way that Zoom bombers sneak in is through annotations or through whiteboard. So uh, for annotations, if, uh, here there are two settings, you can allow people to save screens, that's fine with annotations, okay, I, I don't see any problem there. By default, only the user who is sharing can annotate that screen. So we've I've seen in other meetings where if uh, other if you don't set that, then people can write on the screen that people are sharing. Uh, mostly, that's usually scribbles, and the people don't even they're just playing around with it. But there is a there is a possibility for Zoom bombers. And the other thing uh, is that for the whiteboard, I just turn the whiteboard off. Uh, I'm not sure how we get it back. Heike, do you know if, if you turn the whiteboard off, can people now use the whiteboard in this meeting? I'm afraid not. Hmm, okay. So then, in other words, you can't, um, you, you can't, if you don't allow the whiteboard at the beginning, you can't get it back. So if you want people to have a whiteboard, you have to let anybody have it. Is that right? As far as you know. Exactly, yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, another thing we have to be careful about Zoom bombers. I see there are two Heike Philps here. There's also two Chris Fries here. So Zoom bombers often come in under the presenter's uh, uh, icon. I, but <laughs> I, the I thing is, I, I joined twice because I wanted to try out the password, which I earlier uh -huh. communicated. You know the one, the number? Yeah. under the phone settings yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. and i thought i'd try this out and actually it was um who who found out lucy was lucy found out how to find the password inside the meeting uh -huh. so and and we found it under the i for information in zoom yeah uh -huh. yeah not the green shield but i for information and um i was wrong you know i, I, I was wrong with the phone settings password thingy sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Chris often comes in. Chris comes in twice. He comes in on his uh, uh, on his uh, Mac uh, mach machine, and he also comes on his uh, iPhone. So he does that often. But it's also a trick for Zoom bombers. So you have to watch out for that. Okay, I'm just sharing a screen that we've got here. In a second here. So am I still sharing, or am I not sharing? I'm not sharing. You're not not sharing at the okay. moment. Okay. So I'm going to back, go back to my share and uh, having, okay, so the next thing, am I sharing now? Ensure that removed participants are not able to simply rejoin the meeting. This is very important. Um, when you remove somebody, that's it. They, they cannot get back. And, uh, uh, uh oh. Ben, are you able to see the text chat while it's just screen sharing? Uh, not very easily. I don't think so. Let's see if I stop, stop my share. Is there something in the text chat I should be looking at? I mean, in general, are you seeing the text chat of Zoom when you're screen sharing? Uh, no, I, I've just opened it. Maybe if it's on top. No, well, if if uh -huh. if you want me to show you. <laughs> I've got the screen share. I stopped the share and I can to, see. Mm -hmm. Yes, You have okay, to start yes. screen sharing to. Ah, okay. To, okay, thank you. I will start screen sharing. Mm -hmm. And here we go. There's a screen share. All right. I can see the text chat now. It's when I present. Oh, good. When I present. Then it's fine. That's yep. the problem. If I present like this, now I can't see. Oh, I can see the screen share. I've put it up. I've 
put the text chat up so I can see it now. Okay. Oh. I think I might have suppressed it because it was covering parts of the screen I was trying to present. Okay, yeah, I can see it all now. So uh, if you pop out the chat, yes, I can do that and resize all the windows and that's what I'm doing right now. The only problem is I can't see the right side of the screen I'm sharing. But anyway, very important that you set up before you, you launch your meeting. If you need to remove someone, you have to make it that they can't get back in. So that's what this setting is about. Uh, otherwise, your only option is to move them to the waiting room. If you move them to the waiting room and don't let them back in, they're also quarantined over there. Okay, so that's the things that you have to set up before the meeting. During the meeting, you have also some settings that you can deal with. <clears throat> this this is the security tab we were talking about. These are the toggles that you have. You can lock the meeting. I think uh, one way you some people run meetings is you can let people in, and you can <clears throat> stream the meeting to Facebook, which we're doing right now, or to YouTube if you want to do it that way. And then once you've got the meeting going and it's safe, you can then lock the meeting and people who aren't there by then can just have a look at it on Facebook. And uh, so that's one way to establish security. Uh, anyway, that's there under the security tab. And you can also um, enable the waiting room or disable it. So if you wanna put a waiting room in right now, it's possible to do that. You can just toggle it in. We've taken it out and we have just 10 people in the chat, so we're fine. <clears throat> You can also allow or disable screen share here. So we've disallowed it for everyone at the beginning of the meeting as a security measure, but we can also allow it for everyone. If we think we're in a safe crowd and somebody wants to use a square as a screen share, you can turn it on for everyone. Chat, that's kind of inconsequential. I always allow it. I love the chat. It's, it has great information there every time. Um, and then people to rename themselves, that's also, uh, kind of an important, an important thing. So just going on here, if, if you have anonymous participants, if you have a waiting room and you have people in the waiting room who whom you don't know who they are, they come in and they call themselves iPhone or something like that. You, can, you could ask them to leave because you can communicate with the waiting room and return with some identity. Or if you want to let them in because that's impractical, then once they're in, you can ask them to rename themselves. And they can do that if you put the rename themselves toggle there. Okay, so, um, and that's almost done then. Do you have any questions up to now that you'd like to ask? Those are the main things. I'm just gonna show you a couple of things that you need to set up that you might wanna be aware of. What about the whiteboard, Chris says? Uh, it is an option when screen sharing. So if no screen sharing is allowed, no problem, but it don't allow annotations by the people. Okay, well, so Chris, do you wanna explain that? I, I think it's as simple as that, isn't it? That if you have no screen sharing, there's no sharing of whiteboards. Um, so it's not a separate problem. It's part of the uh, screen sharing problem. And then um, in an environment where you cannot trust everyone, you can't allow other participants to annotate anything, screen shares or, or, or whiteboard. Yeah, there is that, I, I haven't really tested this out, but there is that one setting where uh, if you are screen sharing, you can prevent other people from annotating your screen share. Now you might want to have people do that, you know, and that's, that's a typical class technique. So um, if you, uh, in that case you would, but you have set that already because when you started the meeting, you would have set that at the beginning. So if you anticipate that you want people to, and other people to annotate your screen shares, then you would, if you've got a class that you, you're familiar with and you can easily identify yeah. someone who's not supposed to be there, then uh, that would be safe. But um, yeah, anyway, okay. I think you can also 
allow individuals to share content by clicking on the green share content. Mm -hmm. If you're the host, you can click on that. Um, and one of the options will be allow, and then you've got named individuals who you can give permission to screen share to, I think. Named individuals, how do you mean if you well, go to their content as a host uh -huh. you to allow named individuals to share content? Uh, I'm looking under more. I don't see where I have that ability, but I'll, I'll look for that. Maybe we can follow up on that. Um, okay. Um, all right, let me, let me finish my presentation, which is only a few more minutes, and then we'll come back to that if you want to show us more. Okay, so uh, if I go back to my shared screen, the only thing I wanted to show you was that there are other things that you need to set before you start the meeting. And uh, there are just three things. If you want to use a virtual background, you have to set that before you start or enter a meeting. Actually, I think it's for you. Uh, that's your background. Oh, and then the other thing, just beneath virtual background, I noticed that here you can identify guest participants in the meeting in case you want to label some people who you don't know as guests, that's also possible. But I would think you'd have to have a pretty controlled environment for that. Uh, the other thing, breakout rooms, if you want to use breakout rooms, um, you have to set it up in advance. As you can see here, I've just screen copied, uh, screen, uh, a screenshot the, uh, the settings and it also, at that point too, you have to allow yourself to assign participants to breakout rooms uh, as opposed to having Zoom do it automatically for you. So that has to be put in before you start the meeting. The third thing is if you want to use polls, there's a polling option and you have to set that up. You have to give yourself that capability before you start the meeting. There are more things actually uh, in my document uh, I show you how to set up a Facebook stream or a YouTube stream, stream. So you also have to give yourself the ability to do that. And when you give yourself the ability to do it, then when you click on more, uh, where you now see text chat or something like that, if you're a host, you would also then see, uh, you could start your, uh, your Facebook stream or your YouTube stream. Okay, so, uh, and there's the more tab. That's the more tab that I see there. And that more tab, I don't really see it very clearly because there are other things covering my screen. Okay, yeah, so you can see where I see where I can stream live on Facebook or on YouTube uh, because I've got a condensed window in this screenshot. Uh, I also have participants here. You can see that not in the toolbar. When you condense the window, some things go up into the more tab and they're not in the, the toolbar at the bottom. Um, and I think that's about it. I'm recording right now. Uh, because I set up polls and breakout rooms, that's also options for me. Okay, so um, if you're using uh, reduced screen, I often run these in reduced screens so I can have access to the rest of my desktop. So um, that's something to be aware of. Your participant controls might be in that other screen. In that other screen. So I'm winding up now. So uh, this is uh, Learning Together is something I've been doing for the past 10 years. Uh, it's at learningtogether.net. And uh, these are the URLs where you can get the slides and where you can get the, uh, the document that I've been showing you. And tomorrow, I hope, I'll be able to get the recording up at learningtogether.net. So you can see the recording uh, and also the uh, um, the Facebook recording is streaming as we speak. And um, there you are. So when I get the recording, I'll put it here in the slide presentation at this last slide here. And this has been Learning Together episode 473 and Talon webinar number 27, it looks like. Okay, so that's 
really all I have to, that was my presentation and um, comments. Uh, we've been learning as we go along because Chris and Heike have been good about, uh, let me see, let me check the text chat here. Uh, does anyone want to articulate any questions you had in the in the text chat? Yes, streaming. Yes, streaming to YouTube offers closed captions. That's correct, Chris. Yeah. I've seen those closed captions. I'm streaming to Facebook, and I think there's also there is an option when I'm doing recordings from YouTube. Uh, I can also turn on closed captions. You should be able to get those if you watch the recording. You should be able to set your closed captions, but I've always turned them on uh, when I do the YouTube. And yeah, you can see that uh, in Facebook they do closed captions as well. Very useful for language learning. Okay, can, is everybody able to mute? Let me let me just unmute everybody. I'll just. All participants are unmuted, but I see you're still there. Okay. You're still muted. Yeah, I'm still here. I've okay. got to I've got to cut out in about a minute because I have to get the same Zoom training Marianne is going to. We're learning how to use um, Acrobat uh -huh. because uh, we teach at a community college in Maryland uh -huh. mm -hmm. and in the ESL program, and we went remote at the you know. At spring break, uh -huh. you know, oh, how convenient. You know, playing catch up. Yeah, you know Zoom. We've been teaching in Zoom, so like we're kind of like Zoom, Zoom warriors. Mm -hmm. And some of the things you talked about are settings that our IT has put into our Zoom. Mm -hmm. And some of them we can override, and some of them. I have to look at it. I think some of them we can't override. I think mm -hmm. they're. The but at least now you're aware I'm, of them. And I'm in the same situation. Yeah. Sometimes I can't. I'm. I'm also have a, a business setting, and some of the settings have been blocked by the admin, right? <laughs> yeah. So you know, so I have to look at this and see mm -hmm. some of the things that you talked about today because, um, I haven't successfully used the whiteboard myself. Mm -hmm. because I can't write on it easily. I don't have a stylus. I just have a okay. laptop. And yeah. the whiteboard is a little trick on it if you log in with an iPad and use the stylist. Yeah, yeah. so that I think would work. Yeah, so, so anything that I need to put up like on the whiteboard equivalent, I just do it in a Word document for my oh. <laughs> But I would, I would like to have more of a whiteboard or a webcam and then like, a whiteboard in my living room <laughs> so we can, I can well, I, you know we're all learning this underutilized. <laughs> yeah yeah so that's very good feedback thank you so much yeah well, thank you for coming but we're uh, you're in maryland yeah you just told us uh, i'm in maryland and uh, i you're you're this just a minute so in an email that. from the the tsol you know gossip gossipy little newsletter that comes out uh -huh. every case that's where i found you so yeah, like I'm great great huh? yeah yeah well it's all it's it's recorded and everybody will have it whether they can come or not so um yeah. that's uh, that's kind of what i've been doing with learning together and talent teaching and learning in isolation we've been getting people mm -hmm. especially at this time uh since last march coming together and, and if you want to have anything you want to contribute you're welcome to come to our talent page shinyurl.com slash talent 2020 sure, and you can suggest uh, your own webinar. I just, I just saw a Zoom bomber. I loved it. Oh, yeah. I loved it. Where? Where? It could be Graham. It could be Graham. Uh, no, she's wearing a mask. You want oh. to see her? Wearing a mask. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, lady, folks, I have got to cut out because okay. I'm like two minutes late. So mm. I, I love will. You, I really chat with you guys late. again. Well, thank you. Thank you for staying with us for so long. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Hey, Lynn, I did the chat my... and I'm I'm out of here. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> bye. Lynn, I did my first workshop on Tuesday and it worked like a charm. Thanks to you. It was awesome. Oh.
Oh, thank you so much. I, I can't thank you enough for all the help you gave me. My office is transformed because of you and all my presentations. It's amazing. And guess what? I had a workshop with, I think it was signed on, were 25. Uh, it came, 23 came, and 20 of them had watched my video and answered, answered the form. But you know the form, what I did with the form? I used Mentimeter. Ah, okay. With the questions that I had for them. And as they were, and then I could see on Mentimeter already how they answered with a word cloud. Yeah. It was awesome. So when, when the session started, I pulled out Mentimeter with 20 answers on it already. Yeah. It was incredible. Oh, and that's it, great. That is you. That is you. And yeah. it was, and I gave them, I think, 15 minutes pre task. That was all that is needed. They came with an attitude, and yeah. 20 of them said, Yes, I've seen the video, and yes, I've answered the, the, the survey. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I, it's, it's great to know you didn't have to do an extra step because I've, I've done word clouds with their responses on a Google form, but I had to import their data into a word cloud application. But oh, with yeah. Mentimeter, well, Mentimeter, Mentimeter gives fast. it to you. Yeah, yeah, it's like Mentimeter for the participants. It looks like a Google form. Yeah, but uh -huh. thankfully, okay. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Thank you. you have to have a paint account with Mentimeter. It's a bit expensive, but it's really worth it. Ah, oh, thank you so much. It was such a blast, honestly, for me. It was such a personal stepping stone, a milestone that I've reached after two years of working this workshop format. It was well, incredible. The key is don't give up on the pre-work. You know, people say, oh, they don't do it, they don't do it. But it's, it's your attitude and the way you set it up that makes the difference and not giving up on it. And eventually, they're all going to do the pre-work. <laughs> so great. That's cool. fantastic. Okay, I must go. I have a meeting. <laughs> yes, I have a wife who's making signals. <laughs> <laughs> Do, does she signal with the wine, the glass of wine? Uh, we, all, we had our dinner coffee. beforehand. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're into the latter part of the evening now. Something well, nice about it. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you very much. And uh, yeah. we'll, appreciate everyone being here and uh let's see thank bye you here. bye for now must go <laughs> dash oh, okay i'll turn all this bye. off bye bye Lynn. Bye, love bye. you and you look gorgeous as a zoom bomber <laughs> i never saw the zoom bomber Did we, why you know, you? yeah it was a split second she switched on the yeah i uh, won't say more you okay. can do it once the recording is off <laughs> well you could do it while the recording is on that would be even better no, uh, no, no. You had your chance. It's in the, okay. it's in the, the uh, maybe it's in the world. Facebook feed. I'll just go back and have a look. It could be, I don't know. So, <laughs> okay, bye bye. We do, we do have some, yeah, okay, bye bye. Nice to see you, Lane. Okay, bye bye. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'll go ahead and do an outro here. Chris, anything you want to say before we go? No, 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 no. I'm out of here too. Thanks. <laughs> okay, uh, this has uh, been uh. Learning Together, episode 473, Talon webinar number 27, and we're at the 18th of June, 2020, and we do these things often. So you're, thanks everyone for coming, and uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to stop this on Facebook. Let's see, Paul, no, stop live stream. Yes, that's it. Okay, bye Facebook. Okay, this live stream is stopped, and now this recording uh, over and out, to Chris, thanks for staying so long and bye to everyone.